Welcome to the XR Magazine podcast. I'm your host, Diana Olenik. And on this show, we dive into the cutting edge worlds of XR, Web3, and artificial intelligence with the brightest minds in the industry, bringing you exclusive insights and game changing conversations that will revolutionize your understanding of the future. Today, we are thrilled to have a very special guest, the founder and CEO of Marineverse, Greg Siemidovic. Marineverse is a groundbreaking platform that is changing the way people learn and experience the art of sailing. Through the power of virtual reality, anyone can now learn to sail in a safe, immersive, and realistic environment. And that's just the beginning. With Marineverse, you can also connect with other sailors from around the world, practice your skills, and experience the thrill of the sea, all from the comfort of your own home. Greg is not only the founder of Marine Bears, but also the lead developer with years of experience in the fields of virtual reality and game development. His mission is to inspire, train, and connect sailors, and his passion for sailing and virtual reality has led to the creation of a truly amazing platform. So whether you're a seasoned sailor looking to brush up on your skills or a curious beginner looking to explore the world of sailing, you won't want to miss this episode. Thank you for being here, and I can't wait to begin. Let's do it. Thank you so much, Greg, for being here today. We're super excited. How is everything going right now in Melbourne, and of course, with you? Uh, hi, Diana. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, yeah, uh, Melbourne is good. Uh, nine. 30 a.m. this morning. Uh, already had my coffee outside. It's sunny, even though we entered autumn recently. But yeah, it's good. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for this kindness on like showing up and helping us by learning about marine bears. And speaking about that, please let us know a little bit about your background and what type of situations led you to create, or actually the whole team, marine bears. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, so... I'm Greg, and uh, I'm, my background is in software engineering. Uh, I studied uh, IT, and uh, Marineverse started as a combination of, I guess, my two passions, which is sailing and technology in 2016. But really what we do at Marineverse today is we make sailing more accessible to everyone. We give anyone with the headset opportunity to try sailing and learn, relax, and explore or connect with others, uh, other sailors and other people interested in sailing through racing and other activities. So that's in the National uh, Marineverse and our main, the most pop popular app today is Marineverse Cup on a MetaQuest store. Uh, but if you've been in VR industry in 2016, 2017, you may uh, heard about VR Regatta, which was the sailing app we've done for uh, Steam VR uh, back then. Yeah, so that's in a nutshell, uh, myself and Marineverse. Oh, thank you so much. So I am very tempted to ask you, why particularly sailing and, and how that passion started with you? Uh, long story short, uh, I think my parents introduced me to Sea Scouts when I was 12 years old, uh, myself and my friends. And that was a long uh, adventure uh, in uh, middle school and, and, and high school, basically. Every summer, lots of sailing and canoeing and, and stuff like that. And there was always this kind of connection for me between summer and weekends were about nature and water and sailing. And then uh, all the other time, I guess, was school and technology and computers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it's actually a common sto story for many people that uh, sailed as uh, kids. When I went to uni, uh, I actually stopped sailing because it was a different city. That there weren't as many opportunities. Uh, and I focused uh, fully on that second part of, I guess, my uh, interest, which was uh, tech uh, and st studying software engineering. And then I went to work. Uh, long story short, moved to Australia from Poland. Mm -hmm. And it actually took me a couple of years to get back into sailing. And, and that's actually connected to Marineverse. So there is a bit of a ACA moment, I guess, how it all uh, come together, I suppose. But but yeah, ultimately why sailing is because it's something that I've done as a kid. And I think uh, reflecting on that over the years, it has many benefits uh, on many different aspects. I think like sailing is generally a good 
potentially a good thing for for the, the world really and uh, i would like to share that passion with uh, everyone and if through our work we can uh, inspire others to try or learn more about sailing then uh, that makes me very happy i guess yeah that sounds amazing absolutely getting this cross section between passion and you know purpose and what is something that is useful and uh, also with your professional background i i tend to speak a lot about something that is called the ikigai which is this intersection of different aspects that actually make the purpose bring to life. So I consider that as a great example. Thank you for sharing that. So in real life, just to give a little bit of context for someone who is new to sailing, what is in real life challenging in terms of sailing? Like why people, you know, like what what usually people find a little difficult to, to learn when they are learning sailing? What are the technicals of the, of the practice? Yeah, uh, I mean... Without going into too, too much detail, uh, I'll break down sailing into the three kinds quickly. So uh, if people can see the video behind me, they're like a big yeah. yachts. So if you start on a big boat like that, you probably will be a part of a crew and your experience and challenges will be different than if you start on like a small boat on your own, right? Because there are basically different opportunities. Uh, but how I started and I think how many people will start is a small boat where maybe like three or four people go on that boat and then there is an instructor and you get to do different things and sometimes you get to steer, so be in the control of the boat. So what I found the most challenging uh, the first time I was on the boat, I actually remember that, uh, was there is so much confusing vocabulary that goes with sailing, uh, like domain-specific language, that, uh, you know, my native language is Polish and all those words didn't really sound that Polish to me. And I was like, where is all this language coming from? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you have your main sheets and uh, bow lines. And like, I mean, like all those words are a bit confusing in the beginning. And it's hard, right? Because you, you are in a physical environment trying to make sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And yet people are talking to you, grab this thing. And if they're not careful, they're describing it by the proper name. And you're like, okay, well, what do you mean? This or that? Uh, so yeah, I think that that's super confusing. And then if you actually get in the control of the boat, uh, boat is not like uh, like a car. Like a car, you can go pretty much in any direction. Uh, with boat, like a sailboat, you have to be aware where the wind is coming from. And there is something uh, we call no-go zone, which is around 90 degrees upwind where you cannot directly move in that direction and this can be very confusing for the beginners uh, like they they get into the no-go zone and the boat is not moving and if the boat is not moving it's hard to steer and they're really confused and you know like it can be actually quite stressful especially uh, if you are in one of those situations where you start on a boat on your own right so there's no one else uh, there's maybe a rescue boat next to you uh, shutting to you the instructions like what you have to do but ultimately you are confused and uh, both those examples, by the way, today Marine Verse Cup can help you with. Like you can learn those things at home, at yeah. peace, at your own, uh, you know, leisure. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully by the time you're on the water, you have other challenges, but those things are no longer a problem, right? You you, you can actually learn them uh, at home. Yeah, that, that is a great point. And also I'm so excited that you definitely share a little bit with detail which is what we we love a lot to to relate on what is it you know that that makes it so valuable for hmm. this type of app ultimately to exist and is this type of challenges that happen in real life that makes a person the first time if a person is actually afraid of maybe the ocean and then at another layer which is not knowing the terminology and at another layer, which is maybe not being very familiar with uh, water type of vehicles and what to expect. So I think that is, is, a, is a very good, very good example that you show there with being confused. Just by what you mentioned, I would be confused. So I you need marine bears, <laughs> definitely, too. And also the other thing is that we might be into sports and, and willing to learn very different sports, which is my my situation. I really love to, to learn new things. But I don't have the ocean, ocean not even close. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think that it's a safe environment to start practicing. And the next time that we are around, maybe making a more confident, maybe starting the practice in real life, 
but bridging that that gap of being you know totally unknown and maybe very nervous of trying a new sport so i think that is another another situation that it really is very very helpful for someone new like me yeah exactly like we want to make uh sailing less mysterious and more inviting for everyone and by the way uh uh you need a body of water right so if you have ocean that's awesome uh, but also yeah oceans are powerful and sometimes scary if you have a lake that's perfect and if you have a river depending on the river it may be good as well so basically don't assume that because you are like in a center of a big land mass that you cannot go sailing it is possible that somewhere around you there is a lake and people are uh, yeah. sailing there yes yes yeah that, that's definitely the case we have many lakes in Canada kind of like the land of the lakes <laughs> and uh and uh that's super super uh, awesome because we could take you know the experience with marine bears have a little first um you know try and and, and start going more if we are interested in that and then going to try for for the real experience and based on that actually i noticed you have done very successfully many like partnerships with companies that are actually offering that service in real life how did you go about you know making these connections was it difficult to make the partnerships like how was your strategy in terms of making those partnerships i really believe that you did it super great and it seems you're doing very good as well with that kind of merge between real and also the virtual experience uh yeah, uh, it's a great question and, and something that we're still working on, uh, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, but essentially, our vision for Mindverse Cup specifically is approachable. So mm -hmm. hopefully not too confusing and everyone uh, can get into it, but also authentic. And and part of uh, what it means for me to be authentic, uh, in addition to like, you know, physics and simulation, is also bringing the actual selling universe into the app, which means uh, ultimately, for example, bringing the real selling brands and products into the app. So just by playing that app and being exposed to what, what's in it, uh, you um, you will get familiar with them, you know, the industry and environment. So if you actually become a seller, uh, again, you'll be more knowledgeable. You actually will feel less excluded. Like, you know, imagine you are at the lunch at the table, there's like six sailors and you are a new person and they're chatting something about uh, selling related or maybe they've, uh, you know, discussing uh, some brand now for the marine bears cap experience hopefully you know what they're talking about right now do you question like how those partnerships actually happen i mean to be honest uh i'm not the best partnerships person like as i said my my background is in software engineering so they probably uh, happen in a way, way more long way than maybe they would have to but for us they happen through a lot of um lack uh separate entity and sort of like a long threats that almost happened sometimes over the years. Uh, I, I give you the example. Uh, the big partnership that is actually the most visible in the app is our partnership with the local uh, boat builder called Wasp. They have quite amazing one person uh, high tech dinghy that in real life, not many people will experience because it's not that cheap. And it's also, as I said, like high performance, so like high, quite athletic, but in a game you can try it. But the funny thing is the boat manufacturer is here in Melbourne. So you would think that this would be the easier partnership to, to pull off. Uh, but actually how it happened is uh, one of our team members was at the uh, US sailing. So that's a government body for sailing in US at the US sailing conference, having a booth and, and, uh, and showcasing our technology there. And there was someone from a big racing event uh, responsible for young people from UK uh, trying it out. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. And somehow he made the connection that their partner, so not uh, basically, this is getting confusing, but that's how confusing it is. So this is a, a big racing circuit. The, the person is from UK and he makes the introduction to me, to someone he knows from Melbourne, who was the person, the person that ultimately allowed us to pull off the uh partnership with the WASP uh, here in Melbourne. So you can see this was like US, UK, back to Melbourne. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's just one example. Um, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Others are more or less confusing. Like uh, we're very excited right now to be working with Nautiget. Nautiget is a pioneer of e-learning for sailing. They have amazing uh, 
training curric curriculum you can do uh, on their website. And now we are working on bringing more and more of that content into our app. So we can talk about more about the app, but essentially working on that. And, and this is basically what I guess is the easier way to imagine how this happened. We put the app on a store. Mm -hmm. The person from the company found it on the store, tried it, mm -hmm. found it useful mm -hmm. and interesting and, and basically a future of selling training. So they reached out to us, called, mm -hmm. and we just made the connection and, and, and took it from there. It yeah. still took us a couple of months to actually agree on the details and, you know, and, and make it happen. But yeah, that, that's how those partnerships happen. And, and I hope we can get uh, more of them because I guess the vision for my Cup is to basically be like this platform for the sailing industry where okay. we we ultimately want to grow sailing, like make more of the people sailors. Yeah. And uh, we believe that, you know, everyone in the industry, sailing industry will benefit from that. So uh, we kind of feel like a natural partner for many of those brands, which is fun. It's always fun to talk to, uh, for example, like a designer of the Wasp. Uh, I would never get probably, or like it's unlikely I would take to, uh, get to talk to a person like that, uh, just as a regular sailor here in Melbourne. But through, I guess, this work, this opens up those interesting connections as well, which is, I guess, the perk of the job. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that particular experience. I like to know, because in the world of development and design, or actually design and development, it always we have in the back of our mind. Oh, I wonder how did they come up with a with a great design and also the development, what type of challenges they had, etc. I noticed, like without being an expert, but I imagine there is a lot of challenge potentially with simulating the wind in relationship with the water, for example. So I wonder if you had any challenges there, um, how did you do it or any other challenges that you might have had during the development of the app? So the uh, mechanics, etc. I mean, th there is definitely lots and lots of challenges and, and many of them still unsolved. We're still working on that. But the way we like working and uh, and I guess I would encourage, I think most, most of the people to work this way is... Uh, agile way or like in small increments sort of like doing something simple that delivers a bit of value and then building on that uh, and that's how we solve our challenges basically if there is like a huge challenge sometimes we basically try to simplify the problem and maybe solve part of the challenge that is still useful so for example to your question of wind and water in real life yes it's super complex and like if we actually were to do something that resembles an ocean with the wind like we we are very very far away and i'm not, not even sure this is possible on you know like a powerful pc to do in a good way maybe it is but definitely very hard maybe impossible on a standalone device quest which is essentially <clears throat> glorified smartphone right so uh so in this case uh the, the challenge is solved by just some clever idea and clever trick okay like how can we make it so that it's good enough uh, this you know 80 to uh, 80 20 rule that maybe for like 20 percent of effort that's actually probably work in this case 20 percent of efforts to implement it we are getting 80 percent of value for someone who is trying to learn how to sail but to bring that remaining 20 percent of realism that would be like 80 percent of efforts that hopefully i mean we are slowly going into that direction but uh, yeah like wind physics is for sure uh, tricky yeah, yeah, that's great. But still, I believe the user, when they are experience, experimenting the app, they might have the feeling of certain conditions approaching, you know, based on certain simulated physics, right? Like, yeah, yes, even though we're sure. not yeah. going to feel the air, but the consequence of something may be simulated, making, you know, a different outcomes from, from the experience, right? Is that, yeah, that, is that how you navigated like the physics for this type of app? Yes, hundred percent. And I guess this kind of shows uh, it's it, it's it's funny because uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm I'm sure this is true for many sports and activities. But you can talk to the sailor who is like in their seventies and they and they've been sailing for like fifty years, and they and they, and they will tell you that they are still learning. Like basically, there is so much nuance to sailing that uh, you know. Uh, when you set 
uh, are we simulating the wind physics? I'm like thinking about some very nuanced details and we still have a lot of work to do. But on a on a high level, like as far as the beginner is concerned, yes, we have basic physics and basically the things that you will probably learn in your first couple of months of sailing, that's kind of there. Uh, and it's actually reasonably simple, uh, as I think, <laughs> which is basically if you know where the wind is coming from, you're pulling your sail more the closer you're going to the wind direction. I, I mean, I, I imagine this, be, this may be confusing if you haven't been on the boat, but essentially the principle is quite simple. But then knowing it and applying it uh, can be tricky for the beginner. And I guess that's where the app can help. And if you understand that, uh, you will be way more successful in your first days and weeks on the water because, again, you understand at least what you are supposed to be doing, which is uh, always a plus. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. So, and I believe also to create a platform like this one and the way that is growing, et cetera, it might have an interesting also beginning because you have your background in software engineering or as a software developer, uh, but there is definitely more people involved. How did you come about, like from your background, assembling the team and making everyone, you know, like work towards the same goal? What what did you use? How did you do it? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh... Definitely true that uh, it's more like it's quite a few people involved in making it happen. Uh, and honestly, uh, the very start, like the very first weeks and months of the project, uh, I uh, enlisted my partner to help me out. Uh, like she happens to have a bit of skills in 3D and uh, in graphics design, which were the things that we needed that I didn't have, and, and that and that got us going. If you look back on what we were shipping in um, May, June 2016, those were like very basic, almost like student-like project quality, so simple things. Yeah. But uh, when we put it out there, uh, the great thing happened, which is people with other skills, uh, for example, way better 3D modeling skills, seen what we've done, seen the potential of what we're doing and and, and seen that we need a lot of help. So yeah. they reached out to us and uh, essentially we connected uh, like here on, on uh, digitally and, and and we got to work together. Uh, so uh, in in two, two, three years of the project, we collaborated actually with three uh, artists from, um, uh, from Canada and we were working with a selling expert from US uh, and basically... Uh, I guess I wouldn't say that I was necessarily, ad other than being open to it, uh, it wasn't my amazing charisma that brought the help on board. It was more, more like putting our product or idea out there and trying to broadcast uh, that we're doing this. And, and then naturally people that were attracted to this vision or this idea uh, got in touch. Uh, so that was uh, at the very beginnings, but uh, the, the next step of that was uh, we are lucky here in Melbourne and in Australia, uh, and I think in Canada similar stuff exists where you, you can get grants and funding for projects. So we applied for one of those uh, grants with uh, VR Regatta, which was that project in, in 2016, and we got enough to essentially assemble a small team of uh, various freelancers and contractors that help us with things that really took the app to the next level. For example, we have like amazing, amazing sounds in the game, including the wind, which changes the sound depending on where you're looking and how fast you're going. And mm -hmm. that was developed by uh, basically a, a expert sound designer that uh, happens to uh, live here in Victoria, in Melbourne, and uh, and we could work with him through this grant. So that was amazing. Yeah, that sounds, wow, super exciting. And uh, I guess in terms of design, typically how this happens is that as the app, you know, is more people starts to play it, they offer feedback and then the iterations happen based on that, right? Did you actually get a minimum viable product? I believe that is what you publish. Uh, yes, and we probably built uh, something which wasn't necessarily viable, like uh, what... Like we probably leaned on, on on having something yeah like 
ship, shipping it. So basically having something very, very basic and putting it out there. But but since the beginning, uh, we always communicated with our community in terms of tell us what you want, how can we improve it? Uh, uh, you know, we started with, uh, with Reddit, uh, so like online forum, posting our early videos, there was lots of comments, lots of feedback. Uh, we have uh, Discord where our community can, hangs out and uh, uh, ask questions, uh, give, give us suggestions. Uh, we even now have a feedback forum where people can upvote and suggest things. So essentially today, uh, our biggest problem is just not enough team members, I guess, to do the work. Like we have infinite amount of ideas that uh, you know we want to make happen in, to really realize this vision of I guess, relaxing, training and racing. Like there is so much more we can do. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And what would be your vision, vision, ideal situation of um, of Marine Bears? Where, where is it going? Yeah, it's an excellent question. I mean, so we have those three pillars, uh, relaxing, training and, uh, and racing. Uh, so I will start with the last one, uh, racing. So... Today, you can race in Marineverse Cup and it's sort of like for fun. But really, uh, if you look at the Olympics, for example, uh, Olympics already had esports in the past and they have sailing. So Marineverse should be one of the Olympic disciplines. That's probably one of the pinnacles. Uh, so you have your, like, your pro esport at athletes competing in uh, virtual sailing. So, so that's kind of the racing pillar. For training, I mentioned that there are people that are in their 70s and they still say that they are learning. Like there is so, so much to learn if you actually consider the whole selling universe where you can start on a leg, but you can finish selling around the world, right? So much to train. Uh, so basically, I guess the vision is we covered more and more of this curriculum. So whether you are a complete beginner or you've been selling for 30 years, there should be something for you to practice in a safe environment and, and improve your skills. And then on relaxing, uh, there are so many, first of all, real beautiful locations in the world that it would be so cool to bring into virtual environment. You know, imagine like sailing in the Caribbean or in, in Thailand, like you should be able to do that. And in fact, you should have a choice. If you are a complete beginner and you don't want to learn, you should get a virtual skipper and, you know, just sit on the boat and, and, and enjoy the environment. Mm -hmm. And if you feel comfortable, you can uh, take this steering. But then I suppose, uh, you know, this is a virtual environment. So I guess over time, we can start creating uh, imaginary location and places that are just amazing to explore, uh, but would not be possible on Earth. Like my old joke was like how fun it would be to sail on a lake uh, on moon, right? So like a mm -hmm. fake uh, lake on the moon, but you can see the Earth, you can see amazing sky. So obviously that's not going to happen in real life, but in, in virtual reality, I guess it's good. Yeah, I was going to mention something uh, on, on those lines, which is uh, sparking, you know, the creativity and people being able to also, you know, help inform what would be some of those very, very fun experiences that are unimagined, that nobody has imagined that even could exist. So I think mm. that there is a lot of possibilities and I'm super, super glad with everything that you and your team are doing. And of course, with all the kindness that you expressed today at sharing your work experience and knowledge insights on the journey, creating and growing Marine Bears. So I wonder, Greg, at this point, is there anything that you wish I had asked you today? Uh, no, then it was great chatting to you. I think my closing words would be, I mean, A, if you have a Quest or, or PCVR, check out Marine Bears Cup. Uh, you may think that selling is not for you, but I believe selling is for everyone. And I guess hopefully if you try it, uh, you will like it. And to that, uh, don't assume that it's too hard to go sailing or it's only like for rich people. Uh, no. And just type in Google uh, introduction sailing class around me. And I mean, not everyone will have, will have it. Like if you're living on a desert, then maybe it won't be possible. But in many places, it actually will be possible. And if you are in North, Northern Hemisphere, uh, which most of you probably are, then the, um, summer is starting soon. And in the lead up to summer, there's actually quite a lot of those classes starting. So this can be a, a fun little adventure for you and and maybe a lifelong uh, passion. Like as I mentioned, like people have been sailing for like decades. Uh, that's kind of amazing of this uh, of this activity that it connects generations, I guess. 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for all of the stuff that you've been uh, sharing today. We're going to leave in the comments, in the description, the link to the Discord. But in the meantime, anybody can check Marineverse, like the webpage, right? Mm -hmm. In order yeah, to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, marineverse.com. Yeah, it? that's it. Yeah, okay. Uh, marineverse.com, or if you are on uh, yeah quest you can type sailing uh, in, in the search or marineverse and, and you will find the app as well the app okay thank you so much greg it's been absolutely great to be talking today and i really really wish that we can uh, continue talking maybe later on with new updates about marineverse thank you so much and see you in the next episode bye for now thank you